waiting for Arna, but we're looking for that quick tempo lineup for T1. In terms of how the lanes are shaping up, it's going really well for the Mars so far. Typically, this would be this Slark favorite. On bottom lane, yeah. Hobson. Three minute rotation. Is... Oh, it's not going to pay off, though. Now top lane, Cuckoo, he's in some trouble. Scatter Blast with a crit from Erica for good measures. Able to secure first blood to Vici Gaming. Although a great start here in their top lane. And this is some trains to take the tower. They can even aggressively glyph if they want to as well. But if they do not connect on this rotation from Topson, then he's going to continue to fall behind here. Oh, this actually, they just used the uh, level two Thunderstrike. Topson. Charging. That's a lot of damage coming out. Two points in the trample. Yang's going to be in trouble as well. There we go. That's what they needed. T1 get themselves a double kill and Topson as well is the one that claims all the gold. Yeah, they needed that first rotation to go well. Like I said, they need these lanes to just explode. And this game, what they really do well with the position for Venomancer is they seal off an entire area and make it so that you just can't farm in that area on a lot of these heroes. They actually get the glimpse back as well. And we saw it happen in that Liquid versus VP series and it's happening again. Bottom lane, Frisk. He's going to end up going down. BAB attempting the trade, but Arno He's even got one charges if required, so... D1. That's a big kill onto Frisk. Now able to stabilize his bottom lane. They can also get the Tombstone kill as well. So some extra gold given over to the Slark. And BAB's going to be a bit cautious. Doesn't have the gonna have enough mana for the God's Rebuke. So we'll be able to get the kill onto Zephyr. But Arna is starting to stack up the Essence. Frisk is starting to TP back in. Big D ward from Frisk. It was a freshly placed Observe ward from Zephyr. And even BAB is actually going to rotate. Look at the backstab coming through from the Mars. Zephyr's going to try and position himself away from the tree line, but it's just in the woods. It's not easy to do that at all as BAB finds an angle. And back to top lane, Cuckoo again. Just as soon as he steps a little bit too far forward away from the tower, Erica and Yang He's just walk himself. onto the Nature's Prophet. Or try and TP in white one. He should get a return kill onto Yang, but that's another death on Cuckoo's Nature's Prophet. And now meanwhile, mid lane as well. Topson, he's also in trouble. Vici Gaming making plays oh. after plays across the map. It doesn't matter what lane they are in. They're getting kills out of the early game. Yeah, for sure. Topson's the biggest one that you need to make sure you're shutting down, though. He's the only one that, again, can be that early frontliner for the team. I was talking about it in terms of the supports. Oh, this would be a big kill, though. Do have a TP coming through here from uh, the Snapfire just to try and turn this one around, and it might be another kill. Up the selves, Zephyr. Nice Iron Branch block. Yeah, but we'll still be able to cut through Zephyr in the tree line. He's oh, going to sneak through, but the creep sees him. They spy him out. The Topson's arrived. Here comes the Primal Beast. He's going to try and catch up to BAB, and they'll do just that. So gold injected into Slark's bank, and it looks like Topson's even going to catch out Yang in the tree line as well. Another double kill for the Primal Beast. I mean, more top lane now. And a glimpse back, Erica. Looks like they won't have any more damage for long. Most of the other cores there, and I mean, you could just see the main prerogative, XM. He's sticking up here on the top-hand side. They see him underneath the Observer Ward placed up there on the cliff, so Cuckoo positioning very defensively, helping out with those uh, Treants just to make it not completely obvious. Obviously, don't want that D Ward to go off, especially considering how many times you've died, and well, that's a nice free kill from uh, Topson in the mid lane. Just uh, a classic Primal Beast thing, somehow diving under a T1 tower mid, even when someone else is nearby. Love to see it. Up lane. Erica again. We saw the lack of damage proving to be an issue to bring down the Chaos Knight prior, and it might be the same case as Erica tries to turn it around, but the Sprout will block him in. That is a big kill for T1 to find. Yeah, Venno, space created at the time uh, from Zephyr there. Just making sure that he's keeping these two heroes busy and well, even nice little bottle refill coming. wonder if they're going to look to commit all of their spells. They've got the Dream Coil available and there's the Tombstone as well. Yeah, Yang's nearby too to try and pump in that extra little bit of damage here with the Scatter Blast. Let's see if Topson's going to be tanky enough. That's not the case. Vici Gaming will shut down the slight streak that the Primal Beast was starting to pick up. Oh, another glimpse back. See you <laughs> later, buddy. They're going to get that bit of information with the Observer Ward, seeing that he is coming back to the lane. So you know that potentially once this tower goes down, you're free to make a rotation down towards the bottom side. And I wonder if they're going to go for it with Topson down here with Ana. You could even TP in on Cuckoo if you need oh, it. They're going to be cautious. Cuckoo, they, they tried to get the kill onto Yang. But it puts the Cuckoo Nature's Prophet into a compromised position once again. As they fooled Erica before, but he's going to get some revenge with that previous glimpse usage. 
Yeah, just got a little bit greedy there. I mean, I really do feel like if Cuckoo just doesn't have Venomous Scale, not Venomous Scale, Poison Nova, available against these four strength heroes and the Puck, especially once he picks up that Blink Dagger, it's going to be so much more effective. Great haste rune picked up by the Puck. Ooh, Zephyr. Yeah, well, he's going to pop it just to try and dissuade XM. Static but... Storm from Wymo. Look oh, at the, the bait. bait from Zephyr. Beautifully done. They'll try and lay down the ultimates from Vici Gaming, but it's not enough damage to bring down tops. And off the right side, Arna's going to get involved as well. Finds Frisk left alone. So T1, they've got the numbers advantage at the moment. Arna's going to look to wrap around. Even Cuckoo wants to get in the middle of it all. BAB isolated from Yang. Couple of kills going the way of Raiden. Does look like Yang's going to be able to step out. No one to catch up to the snap fire, but Ana, that's really important. This is into the jungle. You can set up the plague wards as well. It's very difficult for Vici to take fights unless they are smoked up. That smoke pops, or even if they get a glimpse of the Mars, if he gets caught out with like a, a plague ward, speaking of Zephyr, run up the high ground here, just face checking Erica's position. Should be an easy kill for them to find. One man tries to drop the Static Storm, and that's going to be a whiff. And now it puts him in a position where Vici Gaming can capitalize on the Disruptor. From the other side of the map, Arna has found Yang alone. No one else from Vici Gaming is starting to move to the Snapfire's location. So it does look like Arna should be able to clean up. Counts up in a couple of seconds. Actually going to be off the mark here. Yang, can he get cute with the Dukes? No, nope, not with Tops and nearby. This onslaught... It'd be more difficult to be able to avoid that one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've been talking about T Radiant Secret Shops, so if they can just look to connect together, they've got a massive timing that they could look to play around. They're playing on the Radiant side too, so whether it's uh, map Baby control that they want, might or be in Roche. some trouble. Yeah. The rest of the team's starting to connect. Yeah, they got the glimpse as well. White Mon's just in range. This kill might give them an objective now here for T1. Yeah, potentially Roche. Looks like they might be able to secure another as well. The Piggy, not fast enough to be able to get away from the big bad beast. Spam some ability so T1 don't continue to, to hit Roche on. They got all the can loaded. contest this, but they got to be fast. Yeah, they're under the smoke, though. Zephyr's patrolling back and forth, not wanting to give it up the for free. The positioning of is going to be in. Arena's out, but Aegis has been claimed. Arna's going to pick up the second life and look to pounce to retreat. As T1, they're happy with getting Roshan. They just need to cut their losses, and it looks like, unfortunately, Cuckoo with a sacrificial lamb. Generally okay with it. Again, they had to pop a fair few ultimates for make, to make that happen. No poison over B. I think it's okay. the tower. Yeah, Glimmer Cape. He's chilling, all right? Arena again, B A B. He's got a little soft spot here for Mr. Zephyr. Seems like all the arenas have been used like that. Topson, early use of the BKB. They're going to be able to glimpse back Erica, though. Beautifully done from Whitemon. Finds a carry of each. He gave me enough. Frisk is in trouble as well as the pounce connects. The cookie's going to get no distance away for the Undying, and Arn has got another pounce to catch up as well. You know, there's moments on T1 where you get little glimpses of what made the uh, the OG squad of Twitch's advantage. Uh, I think you just got to give up this two, two, tier two top. I think you got to try and split up the map, see if you can get to that next timing. Puck really needs the Yule Scepter. Lane Thompson, again, they're on to Erica. Who get the BKB off for the last second. Ooh. The right clicks need to come out. Ana's going to attempt to find them, but again, he won't be able to keep up at the moment. Pounce is up in a couple of seconds. Ana's going to look to go for Yang instead. Off of the left side, we do see Whitemon go down. It's a pretty decent retreat out of Ichi Gaming. Before they lose his Frisk, they're pretty happy with that. Teep into the middle. They've addressed the Tombstone issue. Arna's going to be cautious, though. Still playing with the Shadow Dance. He even has the Aghanim Shard to utilize as well. But Arna, he's caught out inside the corner. Great the AoE damage is not coming through fast enough as Arna will survive. And now Topson's into the middle. The Pulverize to bring down one. They'll turn to Frisk and they'll even catch out XM. As a beautifully timed pounce from Arna is not enough. XM just is able Like this early gem pickup and you're going to a Slark as well. They're going to try and attempt. They still have the ward up. T1 missed this by the triangle. Arna's got the BKB. It's going to be quick. BAB gets the initial stun. It needs to be perfect of a follow-up, but it's not. Arna's got an opportunity to play around with the ultimate. Now T1, they've shown up instantly. On to Frisk they go. 
But can they get more out of this towards the oh, southern yes, side? Erica, he's isolated. The rest of the team wanted to back up, but Erica wants to go in. Now VG Gaming going to be able to follow up as well, but the BKBs are soon to expire. Zephyr's about They're to controlling ult. the Chaos Knight for the moment, and as soon as they bring it back down after the Yule Scepter, Ana can get all the right clicks out. They'll they try back it. one of the G's and drop. VG don't have an answer. It's T1 fine game one in the lower bracket quarterfinals. Woohoo! That is that is the T1 Dota that I want to see. Get aggressive. Get out on the map. Prevent the enemy team from doing the big objectives that they want. Don't allow them to farm. And Vici, they just looked completely confused by this. This is night and day between the T1 that we saw in these past couple of series that they've been playing. I, I wonder if...